thank everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, my name is Kaylee. I'm with Fullscript, and we are very excited to have Dr. Jocelyn Strand here with us today to discuss more about biocidin, biofilm, and the botanical solutions for microbial imbalances. Um, a little housekeeping first, uh, just a reminder that we are recording this and it will be sent to all registrants after the event so you can watch it back again. You'll also be able to find it on our website, um, fullscript.com slash webinars. And throughout the webinar, if you have any questions or any comments, there is a questions kind of section on your dashboard of the GoToWebinar control panel. You can add them in there, ask them in there, and we will get to them during a Q&A period at the end. Um, so as I said, we are very excited to have Dr. Strand here today. I will uh, give you a little background if you don't know. Um, Dr. Jocelyn Strand graduated from Bastyr University in 2005 with a doctorate in naturopathic medicine. Uh, she then established her practice in the Seattle area, working at uh, Pharmaca Integrated Pharmacy, as well as a gastro gastrointestinal specialty clinic. She returned to Minnesota in 2008 with the vision of increasing the uh, avail availability, affordability, and awareness of naturopathic medicine. With that vision in mind, she opened her private practice at Lake Superior Natural Medicine, where she specializes in GI system disorders, Lyme disease, and autoimmune conditions as a primary care provider through the Minnesota Board of Medical Practice. And in 2019, Dr. Strand became the Director of Clinical Education for Biobotanical Research, Inc. She enjoys sharing useful clinical information based on research and her own personal experience in the talks she gives at events around the world. So now that you know a little bit, more about you. I'm going to pass it over to you and okay. uh, here for a bit and I'll jump back on for the Q&A and, uh, and I'm in the background if we need anything as well. So uh, take it away. That's great. Thank you, Kaylee. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here and I want to thank Fullscript as well for partnering with, partnering with us. Uh, I started using this product line, Biocide in particular, about eight or nine years ago in my clinical practice and it was such a remarkable experience. The clinical efficacy that uh, it really caught my attention. Then when I met Rachel or Dr. Fresco, the founder of the, of the company, uh, I told her, if you ever need anyone to talk about this product, let me know, um, because it really became a passion of mine to get this information into the hands of other practitioners. Um, I think especially as a naturopathic doctor, where it, I'm in a state where I don't have pharmaceutical rights, this is an awesome tool to have for um, infectious illnesses. And, uh, and I'll share some of my own clinical experience with the product. Uh, as well as, um, you know, some of the research that we've done. And I, I'm not sure how to, let's see, I'm gonna, how I'm gonna manage the screen here. One second. Okay. So uh, that's my history with the product. And I'll talk about my initial case study as well towards the end or my initial person with the, with the study or with the um, product line because it was such a remarkable experience. But let me get you oriented to the product itself first. Um, before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. What you, the FDA has not evaluated the statements or claims that I'll make um, or that, the, that are on the slides in this presentation. And then, like I said, you'll also hear me talking about my own clinical experience with the product. Please understand those are not a claim by the company, but just what I saw happen, my, my observations in a clinical setting as well. Um, so the product itself, and, and what we're gonna talk about today is the main use of this product, the way that it works, you know, the mechanisms of actions, the research, what we've seen both borne out in research and, um, and in our clinical reports from practitioners. And so um, hang tight, we're gonna go through a lot of information, but I think what I'd like to do is ground you really solidly into the activity of the product line first, so that then when we talk about the research, uh, you'll understand why we've looked at it the way we have and why we see the clinical efficacy that we do in, in practice. Um, so the product, uh, flagship product is here. This is the biocidin liquid. Uh, the biocidin liquid is a combination of 17 herbs and essential oils. So 13 herbal extracts, four essential oils. It was developed by Dr. Rachel Fresco. It's been around over 30 years now, which is, which is pretty awesome for a company to have a track record that long. It uh, gives you a pretty strong sense of its of how it's going to work when you have used it and when it's been around for that amount of time. So biocidin is in six, this is the full product line right now, 10 products. Once you identify the, the uh, way to use the biocide in its activity, then you select from this list your biocide containing product. And then there are four support products. GI detox is a binder, so that binds up die-off uh, die reactions, uh, any kind of toxicity or herxing. 
Um, Olivirex is our high potency olive leaf formula. It's some additional antimicrobial support, a very potent olive leaf, a very potent antiviral. And it's, it's a really nice one-two punch alongside with the biocidin for complex bacterial um, illnesses as well. Proflora 4R is our probiotic. It's a spore-forming microorganisms. And true to Dr. Fresco's form, it's a formula. All of these are formulas. So you're going to see multiple ingredients. And, and what that does is create a broader spectrum activity. It also tends to, to lend itself to being more gentle on the patient's system when you're using multiple herbals at a time, then you end up, an example, the way that I think about it is if, if you take oregano, just straight oregano, people can get digestive upset from that. But if you put it into a combination formula, it tends to be much more well tolerated. And we have certainly seen that through the years with this product. Um, Biotonic is last but not least. That's this product, the tallest one on the top row. That is an adaptogen. It's a combination of two ancient Chinese formulas, one for qi support, and the other for immune support. And it also has Artemisia annua in it, which is a, uh, as we know, sweet wormwood, very potent antibacterial, or excuse me, antiparasitic, as well as preventing the, hyph the growth of hyphae in yeast and mold. So you can see all of these are designed to use together for different clinical presentations by patients. So the product 30 years ago was developed um, in response to practitioners in the Bay Area who were using, uh, were looking for something, a natural product to help HIV patients keep their pathogen load at bay. One of them was using biocidin and submitted the biocidin to Great Smokies, which is now Genova Diagnostics. And the head of the lab, Dr. Lee, called Rachel and asked her, or said to her, I don't know what's in this or who you are, but it's killing every pathogen that we tested against. And at that time, it was for six years on a CVSA panel, it was the most effective antimicrobial on their panel. Uh, and here's his quote, biocidin has been the most broadly acting and powerful agent evaluated. This was on over a quarter of a million stool samples. That's a huge cross-section of data. Um, so that is why we're really renowned as a GI product is because this is where we got our start. But I just, I wanna take this moment to say that the application is not isolated to the gastrointestinal tract. So that activity that, that, you, that they saw here on the sample um, can be, if you select the right product, you can address other locations in the body as well. So how does it work? Uh, we, have, I, we have identified three different mechanisms of action. I think all of us know that one of the beautiful things about herbs is, and botanicals is that they, they have multiple mechanisms or multiple activities in the body. Uh, and they're, it's beautiful how they work alongside the body. Uh, and our bodies tend to really understand how to work with them rather than um, having them come in and sort of force an activity in the body. So the first um, identified mechanism of action is this anti broad acting antimicrobial select selectively supports clearance of multiple classes of harmful organisms. We have looked at bacteria, mold, yeast, and fungal elements. We've looked at um, parasites, and we'll, we'll go through some of those case studies today, virus, um, so a, a couple of different viruses as well. So we'll look directly at those today. Um, so that's just one mechanism of action, which is exciting in its own right. Uh, what's really cool and I think sets us apart from a lot of other products out there is that it also disrupts and dismantles biofilms. So biofilms, I always think of like an invisibility cloak around the microorganisms and you can have different um, colonies or communities of microorganisms and they can hide out. And it's a mechanism for antibiotic resistance, um, for re-inoculation, refractory disease. And if you can identify or eradicate biofilms, then you have the potential, a stronger potential for lasting therapeutic effect when you use these therapeutics. Um, so very cool way to think about using this product is that it's more than just an antimicrobial, you're also addressing biofilms as well. Um, in addition to that, we have a human clinical trial showing an immunomodulatory effect. So in our human clinical trial was done on the throat spray, which is here, and that has biocidin and alcohol in it. That's all that's in it and it showed a 66% increase in secretory IgA in the oral pharynx in just 60 minutes. Um, this is why we all carry this in our, in our pockets and purses when we're traveling, um, especially useful that right now with what's going on in the world. And we will talk about specifically about that research as well. And I will say, um, as, a, as a scientist myself, Dr. Fresco's commitment to science and research makes it really rewarding to work for this company because we can go after and understand uh, the, the mechanisms and, and really 
when we get asked a question repeatedly, we can find the answers to that. Um, and, and I'll talk about some of that it has really guided our research as well. Uh, so the biocide liquid is a glycerate tincture. It's sweet. I call it sweet pizza. That's how I describe the taste of it. Uh, it's it's awesome for a number of reasons. That the to be able to have uh, a glycerate tincture. First of all, when you when you have um, a liquid, you can do titrated dosing. That means that it doesn't matter the age of the patient, the size of the patient. You should be able to titrate the dosing to make it match the the patients. And so this means it makes it a cradle to grave product. It's a very the only contraindicated uh, time to use it is during pregnancy because we haven't done any any research there. But even um, I've seen it work in newborns, used it myself in my practice for thrush and newborn, um, all the way to I've had elderly patients with chronic um, UTI and catheters that do really well with a product like this because of the biofilm component there. Um, and so it, it's really nice to have this, this gentle uh, and titrated a bit availability for dosing. The other thing that's really important about using a, a liquid is that we have a, a whole microbiome in our oral cavity. If you swallow a capsule, you miss one entire therapeutic area. The nice thing about this liquid is you swallow it, you're also adjusting the oral microbiome, which we'll talk about later, but that's very important also for addressing potential refractory illness. If you don't treat the mouth and you treat the gut, then you can reseed pathogens from the mouth into the gut. Um, there's a lot of research showing that right now. The, the capsule is, the biocidin capsule is five drops of the biocidin liquid. Some people do prefer this, especially if they're traveling. Um, it also can be used as a suppository. We now have this liposomal form of the biocidin. This is really exciting as a clinician. So we think about the importance of getting inside the cell or directly into the bloodstream lymphatic flow if you're trying to address a systemic pathogen or um, organism. So what, what does that mean? Which organisms are intracellular? Of course, all viruses are intracellular pathogens. I think also of Borrelia and other tick-borne illnesses like um, uh, Bartonella and Babesia, Ehrlichiosis. Uh, I also think about Chlamydia and Mycoplasma. These are all pathogens that get inside our cell where they can hide from our immune system. It's very exciting prospect as a clinician to have access to the intracellular space. And we were able to show in our research um, Dr. Leona Gilbert in, in Finland did research on this showing a 74% better intracellular absorption using the liposomal biocidin over the liquid biocidin. Um, so we were able to really prove that we do get that penetration. We, this is biocidin and we send it off to Quicksilver who puts it in a liposomal form and sends it back to us. The one thing to be aware of if you're using this product, this is definitely a practitioner grade product. This isn't something that you would wanna market directly to a consumer. Uh, without their knowledge because you you end up you think about the number of different organisms and the activity the level of activity of a product like this and if people don't understand how to use it it can kind of throw them for a loop in turn in terms of their response to the product and it, it's it's nothing dangerous but it can um, feel pretty dramatic for people with die off um, so question that we get asked the most often in conferences is okay if it kills the good guys or the bad guys excuse me what about the good guys and so true to um, her way Dr. Fresco has invested in some research to look at what happens with probiotic abundance when using the biocidin liquid. So what you're looking at here is before and after testing, each one of these colors is a different participant in the study. And here you can see before, and here are beneficial microorganisms. Some of the, we just selected ones that we knew were important here on the left-hand side. And then we looked at the total abundance before and after. So I'll just describe the outcome to you. There are a couple of things that are important. The first thing is that the total probiotic abundance, we never saw the beneficials wiped out. So that's the most important thing. The second thing is that it act, they actually went up more often than they went down, which is pretty cool. But most importantly is this bug right here, Acromancia mucinophila. Acromancia is an obligate anaerobic, cannot be made into a probiotic, but it's what's called a um, keystone species which means it's a placeholder for metagenomic richness in the gut, which we know now through research that, that that metagenomic richness and that robust diversity in the gut is really important for conditions of all sorts, including SIBO and gastrointestinal health. But now we're also looking outside of that at cardiovascular health, uh, or oral health, uh, brain health, all derm dermatological conditions, all of that respond really well to metagenomic richness. What we were able to show here is, and, and actually this is kind of an old slide. I think we have 12 people back now. 
in all of the participants to date, the acromancia actually went up, which is super exciting for us. We are not expecting that, and I'm very excited to see that. And here's just a slide about acromancia and a snippet of some research. Here is what acromancia has shown in research is benefit obesity, fasting glucose, waist to hip ratio, insulin sensitivity, total and LDL cholesterol, and then here's that metagenomic richness that I was talking about as well. So really exciting development for us to be able to identify that as well. Uh, we do have, I guess there's, there's a whole slew, a part, well, I'm gonna say it this way, excuse me. Um, I have to be careful the way that I talk about some of this stuff. So if you hear me fumbling a little bit, it's because I'm trying to um, be very careful about making any claims right now. Uh, but what we, in the research that was done on the, the stool samples for, for the research that we talked about, that 250,000 stool samples at Great Smokies, here are some of the microorganisms that were on that stool test. So you can see Pseudomonas, E. coli, Staph, Klebsiella, Strep, um, e. coli on there again, it's super important, and gram-negative bacilli of a number of other kinds. These are all organisms that were that are commonly uh, implicated in, in the disease progression of SIBO. Um, so just something to be aware of. Obviously, that's something that we see often in our practice and it's on our radar right now. Um, but these were all sensitive to biocidin in vitro. So we're, we were looking at millimeters or zones of inhibition um, in that research. We do have a small SIBO clinical trial. It's, it, it's not a clinical trial, excuse me. It's a uh, it's pilot research, right? So we had nine people, and this was done at Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine, who tested with a lactulose graft test before and after using the biocidin liquid and the GI detox. So they did eight weeks of just the biocidin liquid, no dietary changes or other treatments were used. And they had, the, the people that used this protocol, 100% of them had either a reduction or elimination of their symptoms. 50% of them had a reduction in hydrogen breath test, which equates or is roughly equivalent to the other herbals that have been studied and also to some of the research on rifaximin as well. Uh, what was noted in that research was that the methane producing microorganisms did not come down as fast. So the doctor there, not as part of the formal research, but afterwards had those patients add olivirex, which is again, one of our support products. It contains olive leaf and some other um, herbals to help with drainage. And when she added those in, she noticed that the methane producing microorganisms went down up to 75% or the methane, actual methane result went down 75%. So very potent and it's something that I can vouch for in my own practice is that I came to rely so heavily on this product with its ability to affect change in people with gastrointestinal dysbiosis that I, if people couldn't afford testing, I would often use biocytin as a diagnostic tool in lieu of testing um, because if they got better, then they would typically get better in relatively short order and it would help me identify the underlying cause. So if someone came in with, uh, with joint pain and I wanted to know is it being caused by LPS released by microorganisms in the gut, I would, I would actually prescribe biocidin and see if they felt better uh, in order to identify the source of it. And so it is something that I saw with that sort of efficacy in my own practice as well. Please don't take that as a claim by the company. It is not that. So here's the outcome in a numerical outcome on our SIBO research. And you can see here the percent improvement and here were the symptoms. So everything from bloating and burping, abdominal gas, so some pretty typical SIBO symptoms are what we would expect to see, constipation, diarrhea. We see skin conditions. We know skin issues such as rosacea are very commonly associated with SIBO, I think that research showed 50% of people with rosacea also have SIBO. And this showed a 100% improvement for the patients that took it. Um, so we are hoping to bring this into a uh, into research now that we can publish. We're working with Dr. Raja Sivamani and Quintron Labs, and we're hoping in the next year to, to um, do this research. We actually are committed to it. We're just ready to get started now to a 25 person publishable clinical research on SIBO, not just SIBO, but we'd like to collect as much data as we can. So we're going to identify rosacea symptoms, SIBO markers, GI permeability markers. So by that, we're look, we're, what I mean is we're going to look at LPS, IgA, IgM, and IgG for LPS antibodies. And that LPS is the, um, it's, a, it's a toxin that's released by a gram-negative bacteria in the gut and antibodies against it indicate 
damage and permeability in the lining of the gut. We're also going to look at chronic inflammation, um, that's interleukin-6 and high sensitivity CRP. So we're, gonna, we're going to collect all of that data and uh, watch in the next year or so for the outcome on that as well. And very excited to see, to move forward with that as well. We do have, here's our research on biofilm. So this was done in 2013. If you look at the graph here, this straight line on the top is the control. And the, the control, the study was done on both planktonic, which is free floating microorganisms, and also biofilm communities. And what you see here is exposure to biocidin of both, again, the planktonic and the biofilm communities. This is pseudomonas. Pseudomonas, the most common cause of pneumonia in cystic fibrosis patients, also really common, again, in SIBO, um, notorious biofilm producer, along with E. coli, which is on the bottom graph. But on both of these, you can see eradication in 24 hours and that they were not able to re-establish themselves. Same thing here with a candida biofilm. So here is zero. You can see these visible biofilms within one hour the biofilm is completely broken down and in 24 hours still unable to, to reestablish itself. Uh, it's really important when you're working with a product that, that will affect biofilms as a clinician to understand that your patient may have symptoms or most likely will have symptoms that they can either have an exacerbation of their existing symptoms or they can have completely distinct sy symptoms from what they typically had. Um, an example that I, I often give is that I had a patient with SIBO type symptoms. Um, so we, we, I put her on biocidin and she called me and she said, I am having anxiety every time I take this product if I work up past three drops twice a day. And uh, at the time I didn't understand biofilms. And so I talked to Rachel and she said, oh no, no, that, they're not reacting to the biocidin, which is what I thought. She was reacting to the biocidin itself. She said, they're reacting to the breakdown of the biofilms. So those biofilms, they have, metabolites in them that, that the patient's immune system and body may not even be managing currently that are just kind of hanging out there causing a low-grade chronic inflammatory response. Uh, I think of things like oxalates and LPS, um, so those lipopolysaccharides again, um, heavy metals and a whole slew of different microorganisms that may be sort of um, hungering down and waiting uh, for their time to, to reestablish themselves. So just being aware of that, if you, if you have someone who has any kind of chronic illness, then 80% of the microbial infections will have a biofilm at that point. I think the easiest to identify biofilm is plaque in the mouth, and we will talk about that. Um, but we, so we do have ongoing plaque deposition or, or production in the mouth, but we have it through the entire gastrointestinal tract. I think of another one is like the middle ear for otitis media, for those resistant, antibiotic resistant otitis media patients, that sort of thing. These are all biofilm related. These are different ways that biofilms are produced and maintained. So we think of swarming motility, they move towards one another, they talk to each other. And then quorum sensing is when they're talking to each other and sensing each other, do we have enough, enough um, beings here, enough organisms here to justify the production of a biofilm? If so, they'll attach and start to produce this uh, extra polymeric, polymeric substance that they put around themselves like an invisibility cloak. And then efflux pump is another way that biofilms can um, generate antibiotic resistance and uh, or antimicrobial resistance as well. Um, so the efflux pump we were able to establish in our research that, I want to go back, I skipped something here, and that is that the products that are in biocidin show activity against, in the research, in medical research, show activity against all of these different aspects of biofilm production and maintenance. Uh, so looking at Spotlight specifically on the efflux pump, what it, what it is, we actually have efflux pumps on our cells as well, uh, but a microorganism will take, the efflux pump will, will identify an antibiotic or an antimicrobial, something that might be dangerous to the cell, it takes that and pushes it back outside the cell once it recognizes it as dangerous. And this means that that antibiotic then can't be active. The same thing can happen with antimicrobials as well. Biocidin was able to totally disable the efflux pump in our Borrelia research. And Borrelia is the disease causing uh, microorganism in Lyme disease. So very cool to see that actually reduce this, the killing dose of ceftriaxone because of that. Ceftriaxone is an antibiotic. And so there's a potential for antibiotic synergy with the biocidin. This is our Lyme research. It was done in Finland, and I'm gonna just kind of breeze through this. I'll let you know, here are the parameters. So it was North American and European strains of Borrelia, 
Uh, they looked at all life cycle stages. This is important because round bodies are typically antibiotic resistant, and they also are what's called a persister cell, which means that they can cause persistent Lyme infection or Lyme disease. Um, so we had a spirochete, the round body, biofilm, all of these were looked at, and they looked at all of these different parameters, minimum, minimum inhibitory concentration, bactericidal concentration, efflux pump inhibition, intracellular uptake, antibiotic synergy, and biofilm degradation. So here's the outcome on, on the antimicrobial or, or bactericidal activity of the biocidin. Here you can see the turquoise is biocidin, and the blue is biocidin LSF, the liposomal form. Both of them had, in 10 minutes, 97% cell death as an outcome. I will tell you, as a clinician in northern Minnesota, where we have a high area, uh, high, highly endemic area for tick and ticks and tick-borne illnesses, that you will see this worn out in your clinical practice if you use the product in this way for acute exposures. It is really remarkable, it's something that I have in, had all of my patients who were outdoor people, who had their kids outdoors, their animals outdoors, everybody had this in their medicine cabinet. Uh, as as a sort of a first aid in case of an uh, in the case of an embedded tick, and I've watched this. I have a handful of case studies where I watched this uh, work in a uh, really remarkable fashion for that particular purpose. So you can see here, um, pretty great outcome. And the other outcome, and I'm going to go back here to look at this the list, is that we shot we saw a disabling of the efflux pump. We did see the killing dose of ceftriaxone went down to one eighth of its normal killing dose when used alongside the biocidin, and of course we were able to see total biofilm degradation as well. So very cool. The one last thing that we were able to elucidate in this research was that the liposomal form did do that uh, transfer across the cell membrane 74% better than just the biocidin liquid did. This is our second published research. It's a human clinical trial, single blind, placebo controlled, and what you're looking at is the outcome of 20 different college athletes who are renowned for their suppression of uh, secretory IgA in the oral pharynx, which predisposes them then to upper respiratory infections in general. And that's why they, they use this particular population to look at, uh, at, this, at the activity of the biocide and throat spray. So this is done independently. We, we um, were not invested in this particular outcome. And what we were able to see was that against placebo, so the way that the research worked was that the college athletes, at the, they either had placebo, biocidin liquid, or biocidin throat spray. And the, against placebo, the people who received the biocidin throat spray after 60 minutes and a heavy duty workout had 66% higher levels of secretory IgA. This is really important. The secretory IgA is on the mucosal surface in the mouth, but all the way through the gut, on our skin, in our eyes, in our breast milk, it's, it is, the, of all of the places that we are, uh, that where our body meets the outside world, this is our first line of defense. So very, very important. We actually make more IgA in a day than we do IgG. We always think in medicine that we have more IgG than we do IgA, which is only true in the bloodstream. We, we produce more IgA than we do any other antibody in the body, um, in a healthy body. So very, very cool and exciting clinical outcome. Again, this is why it's always actually have it sitting right next to me today, but it's also why um, I always have it in my pocket when I'm traveling in particular. So really the biosecond throw spray is a really nice used in combination for seasonal wellness with the olivirex. Olivirex is the highest potency olive leaf oliropin content, which is the active antiviral ingredient in olive leaf. It's the highest potency product available on the market right now. Uh, it's, it has some additional herbs to support lymphatic and kidney drainage. So this is, again, you're seeing Dr. Fresco's um, training in traditional Chinese medicine with these addition, additions of herbs for, uh, for drainage, which is lovely to get that olive leaf where we want it to go, right? We want it in the kidneys and the liver and the lymphatics to, to we want to get it there as well. Um, so really nice combination with the throat spray, the two of them together. Uh, this is my go-to, actually, if I start to get a scratchy throat or, or feeling unwell. So you remember me talking about oral biofilms? This is a picture of a biofilm on a toothbrush bristle. And here is the same biofilm at higher magnification. So if this doesn't make you brush your teeth, I don't think anything will. Uh, but the reason that I brought this in here is because it, it's so important to understand that the teeth are non-shedding surface, so biofilms need a spot to establish themselves, and our teeth don't, the, the surface of it doesn't turn over, and so that's why we develop uh, plaque through the course of the day. So you might get that fuzzy tooth feeling throughout the day, 
that is uh, that is the plaque. And I'm going to go back for just a second. The reason that's important is because we swallow up to or over a liter of saliva every day. There's 10 to the eighth microorganisms in a milliliter. So we are re-inoculating our gut constantly with whatever is in our mouth. So just keep that in mind. And that's where why we have developed this line of dental or oral health products. And I'm going to come back to this because first I want to show you this slide. Um, so what you're looking at here is again a pilot study. This is done by Dr. John Rothschild, who's a dentist, and you, you see tissue. This is a, organisms in the, in the tissues and bones of scraping around a root canal, infected root canal. This was done on nine different people before and after with an average of 35 pathogens before and an average of three pathogens afterwards. This is what I love about this, this study is that you can see HPV here, CMV, there's amoeba, we see Prevotella, uh, Porphyromonas, Campylobacter, these are all microorganisms, gram-negative bacteria that we know are potentially linked to other chronic infectious illnesses or to chronic inflammatory conditions like Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, even, um, even pulmonary health as well. Uh, so this is after one month of using the, the liposomal biocidin, so the biocidin LSF, and it, it really initiated the, the production of or the, the formulation of this line of product here. So this is the dentocidin LS. It is the liposomal biocidin. Uh, it also has CoQ10 and quercetin, which we know support the um, healthy oral mucosa, and also has clove and myrrh. So this is a rinse and spit, meant to be used alongside the, the uh, toothpaste, and to, this is biocidin liquid, 20% of it is biocidin liquid, and then it has a natural toothpaste base, uh, including silica, and it is uh, preservative free because it, the biocidin gives it shelf stability. So just a really nice uh, product. What I love about this as a clinician is that all of our patients are already brushing their teeth, and this is an easy place for us not to increase supplement load, but to start to, to initiate some change in the oral microbiome and potentially then the gastrointestinal microbiome, the pulmonary microbiome, the sinuses, all of that, even the skin is related to the oral microbiome as well, the, the skin uh, microbiome. So very, very important place to start to pay attention to in our patient population. Hopefully you guys can hear this, but I'm guessing that you can. Six so this is plaque from a six milliliter pocket of a patient with periodontal disease. They've already irrigated and done perioscopy and done ozone. And now she's going to mix it with biocidin to look at the effect on the microbiome. Same pocket, but mixed with biocidin. She says, look at the difference in the microbiome. My, biocidin is, so she's having her uh, her patients go home, a patient go home and do biocidin in their periodontal pockets. I think she uses a water pick and adds it to that. Um, so I, I add this in here because of the timeliness of it, and it's just something for all of us to think about. We are in a position as clinicians to tweak people's habits and have them dramatically change their potential outcome with chronic illnesses or even acute illnesses. And so I just wanted to bring this to everyone's attention um, that what's in our mouth actually is what's most likely to uh, populate our pulmonary mucosa. This is important right now because 100% of people with pulmonary illnesses have an altered pulmonary microbiome. So just this is a little pearl for all of us to take away that if we can affect change in the oral microbiome, then we have the potential to change the outcome for people with pulmonary illnesses. So I'll let you um, come to your own conclusions on that. Um, GI detox is our binding agent. It is, again, another formula, so broad-acting binding activity. This is really important. This is why every person that I sent out of the office for the first, especially that first bottle of biocidin, as they're working up to max dosing. So we always start low and slow with chronic illnesses, working up slowly, say one drop twice a day uh, on an empty stomach with the biocidin. And as we're working up, constantly supporting with a binding agent so that as we're generating this microbial die-off, as we're generating 
uh, this bio, uh, biofilm disruption and release of those toxins or meat metabolites that we're giving the patient the support that they need in order to increase compliance, keep them comfortable. I mean, it's not just about compliance either, right? We don't want the patient to be uncomfortable. It means that something inflammatory or uh, you know, organ damage even can be happening if we don't give patients adequate support. So this is a really important piece to remember uh, is to support the patient with this binding, the, the binder. Um, and this is activated charcoal, zeolite clay, humic and fulvic acid, apple pectin, and, and aloe to help some with the tendency towards, um, towards constipation that a lot of people have with, uh, with binding agents. Profluor 4R is our probiotic. We, uh, it's, it's three different strains of bacillus. So it's bacillus subtilis, clausii, and coagulans, three uh, billion CFU of those microorganisms. And then again, as a formula, some additional support. And what I like about this is that this can replace two or three other products at a time, right? So we have quercetin. The quercetin that's in this product is 170% more bioavailable with research, uh, meaning that it gets into the bloodstream better than the standard quercetin does. It's called QU995. Um, it's given here a dose that's been shown to help heal the tight junctions in the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. And again, really important a flavonoid, bioflavonoid for prevention of runaway inflammation. And I love it for my histamine intolerant patients as well. It's just a really nice, or mold uh, exposed patients. This is a really nice uh, additional support. Uh, so in addition to the quercetin and the microorganisms, the spore forming microorganisms, we also have marshmallow root and aloe in this product as the emulsion herbs to help as a salve to heal the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Biotonic is our adaptogen. Again, uh, Chinese herbs, it's two different formulas ancient Chinese formulas, one to support qi. And so I think of that as sort of our vital force of our patients. And a lot of the people that we're working with, especially anyone with chronic illnesses, will need that additional sort of um, adaptogenic formula as well. And then also immune support. Uh, and the last thing again, that Artemisia annua, which is uh, important for if, you, if you're considering parasites uh, or mold, yeast, any kind of fungally thing. So I'm going to go into just a few uh, case studies here. This is a life, this is a child, a uh, 14 month old baby with molluscum contagiosum. So molluscum is a viral uh, illness. It's an acute viral illness. This is a really rampant case of it. We don't typically see this many, but we would expect it, in a, it left to its own, to take its own course that it would take anywhere from six months to four years for a case like this to resolve. And on this particular child, you can see here secondary infection on a number of these lesions as well. Um, so the, the practitioner and I worked together to develop a protocol. We did the liposomal biocide in both oral and topical dosing. So this child had a relatively high dose, I would say, of the liposomal biocide. So this is nine days in, and what you can see is regression of some of the lesions and then crusting over of some of the other lesions. And this is uh, after the practitioner is calling it 50% improvement um, on the front and 25% improvement on the back. So this is only nine days in, and this is 16 days in. So just over two weeks in, we see total re resolution of any kind of open lesion at all, um, hyperpigmentation and a few lesions remaining, and here's 31 days in. So all that's remaining at this point is some hyperpigmentation, and that continues to resolve over time, although it, this is a year ago now, and, and this uh, child continues to have some mild hyperpigmentation as well. Uh, this is another topical application of the liposomal biocide. And so this child had tried loracetin, oral dosing of loracetin. Uh, the, the chiropractor, who's the practitioner, recommended a topical application of the biocide for the warts. And this child put the biocide on and or the mom did put the biocide on the child and then covered in a sock and nine days later this is how that child's feet looked so still some lesion remaining but a really dramatic improvement and of course parents and child both over the moon with that outcome uh, so this is one of my patients as a giardia case study one of uh i would say maybe five years ago someone that, a woman that i worked with came in a uh, 34 year old female she had uh, diarrhea, gas and bloating, and fatigue, and I called up Biobotanical Research, and we they helped me optimize a protocol, uh, five drops, three times a day of biocidin, 10 drops, twice a day of the biotonic. In my head, I thought, there's no way. 
when I when I prescribe this, I think as practitioner we've we practitioners we've all had those moments where we think, uh, does this actually work? And this was an awesome experience for me as a clinician because here's her outcome. Um, so six months later, and she'd only been on the product. I think she took the product for about three months. Uh, so initial outcome positive. June, she tested negative. She retested again the following January, so a year later, and was still negative. And all of her symptoms resolved in about 10 days. It was really, really remarkable to watch. Uh, this is a case of a pediatric patient with a mold exposure at her daycare center. You're looking at Great Plains Laboratory testing here. And this child had chronic sinusitis and coryza. So she, she had, uh, went to her, she'd gone to her practitioner, her uh, conventional primary care doctor who prescribed of uh, antibiotics, two different antibiotics. It did not help uh, this little girl. And then a chiropractor uh, took, kind of took charge of that patient, identified the mold as a trigger here, took her out of her daycare center. And then this doctor did something that we had never thought of before and prescribed biocide and a nebulizer uh, for this patient. We cannot recommend that because we haven't, we haven't um, studied it at all, but that's what this particular practitioner recommended and uh, also oral dosing of the liquid. <clears throat> so this is after three months uh, that she had total uh, elimination of, of all of her mycotoxins. I wanna go back and just show you ochratoxin, 48.2 here is supposed to be below five. So very, very dramatic improvement, total uh, uh, elimination of symptoms also, um, and then the test results obviously cleaned, cleaned up dramatically. Um, I really love this. This was brought to us at a, um, at a conference actually, A4M in Vegas last year, the practitioner came up to us and said, hey, I, I have this, this patient with dementia and we did this testing and I don't remember what kind of testing it is. Someone just asked me that and I need to, I need to memorize that, but we can certainly come up with that if you would like to have it. But what you're looking at here is basically brain inflammation, right? So you can see this woman had a brain on fire. Uh, this practitioner, went after therapeutics in the gastrointestinal tract. So this, this was not a systemic therapeutic per se. This wasn't the liposomal biocidin, it was the liquid biocidin, it was, it was a, um, a liquid biocidin, GI detox, and proflora. It was the three different products to, as a basic sort of um, healing little kit, basically for the gastrointestinal tract. And you can see here, this is a long time treatment. So this is eight months later. Um, that she had a massive reduction in inflammation in her brain, um, but more importantly, her dementia symptoms also improved. So I love it. One of my favorite things about working for this company at the conferences is that we get people coming forward, uh, practitioners coming forward constantly uh, and giving us their testimonials and experiences that they've had. The most exciting and sort of dramatic one that I ever heard was from uh, Dr. Matheson in Canada. She was using uh, one drop twice a day on a pay on a newborn baby who was having seizure from HSV and new HSV of newborn causing seizures, one drop twice a day of the biocidin liquid resolved that for her. And we we're hoping to write that up as a case study with her at some point, but my gosh, how exciting and how rewarding as a practitioner. This is what we go into this for is to try to um, find ways to help people that are easy and low intervention. So uh, that's all that I have for you today. I'm going to if I can figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Let's see here. I might need your help. <laughs> yeah. No, um, you know what? I can, it should be on your dashboard under the sharing, but you can always just leave it up. And, yeah. Yeah, looks like, oh. And uh, stop showing screen. Okay. Can I, I want to say a few other things real quickly if I yeah. could. Yeah. Um, so th we do have, we're partnering with Fullstrip to offer a Black Friday sale. So that's something to watch out for. And then I also want to encourage you to keep buying from Fullstrip, but to know that our company, no matter where you're buying the product from, we can offer you clinical support. And I think that Kaylee was going to put a link, or maybe Tony was going to put a link to get clinical support so that if you want to start using this product and you want to learn how to get off the ground using this product and feel confident about it, that's something that we offer free trainings for that we can tailor towards the needs and your, your needs in your practice. So we have great clinicians on staff and we can, we can give that to you for free. So that's and I also, um, I also got a few questions I know, and we did kind of put it anywhere. Um, currently it's not available in full script Canada, which I know is a little um, tricky for some people. Um, 
but I've reached out. To, actually, I might have gotten something now. I reached out to our um, our team to see if it's in the works or like if there's a timeline. But currently, um, on the Full Script Canada catalog, it's not available. Um, so hopefully, I can get some answers for there before the end of this. Um, you can always email webinars at Full Script, and hopefully, we can um, get that up there to the Canada Canada members. Canada practitioners, but we did get a bunch of a bunch of questions in. I think okay. um, good. If you have uh, have do some time, to to some more. Are you... Oh, sorry. Do you want me to look at them, or do you want to read them to me? How do you want to I do it? Come out if that's well, if that works for you. Um, I think there's more coming in. Also, please excuse my pronunciation of some of these. Um, you guys are the experts on that, but. Uh, and then a few of them did come in earlier in the presentation, so um, you may have covered it, but I'll repeat it. Anyway. I'm having a hard time seeing the questions, so maybe if you don't mind reading them, that would be great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So one of the first ones that we saw was, um, can we give biocidin and GI detox to a patient with elevated hepatic enzymes due to viral hepatitis? Uh, I, I don't know of any contraindication. It, it definitely would be up to the prescribing practitioner. We've never in 30 years of being around, we've never had a any kind of um, reaction to long-term use of the product. Um, sometimes we will see with, we've had reports of a transient increase in liver enzymes using the product if you're addressing microorganisms that are causing that in an underlying way, like a viral infection. So it's something that you'd want to monitor very, very closely. And then definitely the GID talks to mop up some of that inflammation and hopefully prevent any kind of ongoing irritation to the to hepatic cells. Yeah. Um, and a question around the dental side in. I think I'm saying that right. Um, can you use the, <laughs> uh, you probably are also may have mentioned this too, but can you use um, this product in kids as well? And can it be used indefinitely? Uh, we we haven't had any issues with long-term use of the product, no, no reported adverse outcomes. Uh, and with pediatric patients, we use it all the time. We have people using it all the time. And then also, I think along this uh this product as well. Is it okay to use with tooth implants or during the process of having implants? And is there any time when not to use the dental side in, in tooth issues? I guess there's nothing that I know of. Um, again, I would talk to the dentist and make sure you know the activity of the of the botanicals is important to understand. So not just the activity we talked about today, but the anti-inflammatory effects. Um, all of that needs to be understood by the prescribing practitioner before they make a judgment call on something like that. But there's there's nothing that we know of that's a direct contraindication in terms of an oral uh, an oral condition that would that would keep us from wanting to use that product. Um, and I believe actually you might have mentioned this too, but um, does the oral biocidin affect the good bacteria in our mouth? And are there any pro are these products contraindicated during pregnancy? Uh, we haven't looked at it during pregnancy, so um, it's not recommended during pregnancy. Um, how, however, the uh, for the other question, what we looked at was actually stool microorganisms. So we haven't particularly, we haven't looked exactly at what's happening in the mouth, but there's no reason to suspect that it would kill off the same microorganism in the mouth that it didn't kill off in the gut. So we are doing some extrapolation there and expecting to see uh, that there isn't a, a wipeout of the beneficial microorganisms in the mouth or the gut. Um, and a question on what is the dose of biocidin you eventually go up to? Uh, the max dosing is 15 drops twice a day. And ideal dosing is 10 drops three times a day. What I found in my practice, you know, if we can spread it out, that's better. Um, but I often found my patients losing their last dose when we did TID dosing. And so I really tended to go towards that uh, 15 drops twice a day. And, and you always work up low and slow in a chronic condition, in an acute condition where you need to get on top of something immediately, then you ramp up much more quickly. You may even go to max dosing, um, something, I, I might think of that in like a, an a, uh, acute GI condition or uh, acute sinus infection, acute otitis media, not a claim at all by the company, but that's how I use the product in my practice, um, was, was for if there's an acute condition, we go straight to the max dosing or a tick, a tick exposure, embedded tick. This is another reason why I would go straight to max dosing. 
rather than working up slowly. But typically we would start with one drop twice a day and add one drop each day to each dose so that after about two weeks, 15 days, then you're at the max dosing um, and just monitoring the patient as they go along or asking them to contact you if they have any trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, this question uh, says, Dr. Strand, you quickly mentioned the use of biocidin for anterior ear infections. Can you repeat what you mentioned and give personal experience using it in this way? Yes, I can. So uh, the liposomal biocidin was a game changer for me in working with, with um, pediatric patients with, with, otitis, with chronic or acute otitis media. So this is, again, we have no research on this. It's completely my clinical experience but the liposomal, which tends to, again, you get that better tissue penetration, I think up the eustachian tube and into the middle ear, you can either do uh, a topical, um, you know, into the ear canal and then massage the ear, or you can do oral dosing uh, for otitis media. And it, it is uh, it's pretty, it was for my experience, and, and it was more than, I mean, it was quite a few uh, pediatric patients that I worked with in that way where we watched um, resolution of symptoms, you know, in pretty, in pretty short order, I would say 12 to 24 hours. Okay. And which product do you recommend for teenagers that have acne due to possible antibiotic use? Uh, so you could do it a number of different ways. Of course, we want to address any kind of disruption in the gastrointestinal flora or tract from the antibiotic use. So you would consider the liquid if you're treating the gastrointestinal tract SIFO or a small intestinal fungal overgrowth can be caused by antibiotic use. So that's something to consider um, is to really support the gut. And that, that basic sort of gut support is the, the biocidin liquid, the GI detox, and the proflora together. So those three products. And then you can also do a topical application of the liposomal form, which is our preferred uh, product for, for skin or topical applications. So the liposomal form on, as a mask, and then also making sure that you address any kind of fungal overgrowth in the gastrointestinal tract um, and micro microbial overgrowth. Uh, I think what the benefit of that, this is how I thought about it anyway, in my practice is that you bring the inflammatory load down when you reduce the, the, uh, the load of pathogens and um, you know, metabolite, inflammatory metabolite producing microorganisms in the gut, then you clear that load on the liver and the hormonal systems in the body as well. And some more questions on recommendations, I guess. Um, would there be any benefit in female client with hair loss with confirmed gut dysbrosis? Dysbrosis and suspect oh, dysbiosis. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so I we haven't we haven't had any research on that at all. I think you know this is my go-to as a clinician to manage gastrointestinal dysbiosis, and I would anticipate that if that is the underlying cause of hair loss, that you may see a, a change using uh, this product. Hmm. Um, and we, I think we actually had a couple questions about this, um, or kind of along the lines. Um, the question is, would biocidin be contraindicated or indicated with in cases of walnut allergies? So a few people have asked, you know, if a client is sensitive, allergic to nuts, uh, can they use this product? Is there an alternative product other than biocidin? Is there a nut-free version? I guess they've had some... some yes, there's no nut-free version. And I don't think we're going to have a net free version just to, so that everyone knows the answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, if there's an IgE mediated or a, a true frank anaphylactic response to walnuts, then this is a contra, the biocide is contraindicated. Um, in those cases, I would give the um, olivirex, which is a very potent antimicrobial in its own right. I would give that um, sort of the first, first slot instead. And you also might have um, mentioned this as you went, because I think it might have been an earlier question, but how do you dose biocidin with SIBO and digestive complaints? Five or 10 drops a few times per day? Though, I know you so, just mentioned a bit. <laughs> no, no, that's okay, because our research, the research, the pilot research that we did, it was 10 drops three times a day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you're looking specifically for the pilot research, it was a little bit different dosing from what I, what I just mentioned before. So that was two, um, 10 drops three times a day, and it was two capsules of the GI detox per day. Um, the GI detox has to be taken at least an hour away from everything else because it doesn't just absorb toxins, it absorbs medications and other supplements. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to understand that those binders, they need to be taken all on their own. I typically had patients take it at bedtime uh, because they're not usually taking anything else then they have an empty stomach. Uh, Obviously, if you're taking a sleep med, that's not the right time to take it either. But finding a spot where there's a window where they have some time between 
of dosing the GID toxin anything else. And um, also um, a couple questions, I guess, on this uh, on applying bio uh, biocidin light. Liposomal. I might have said that wrong. I'm sorry. Exactly. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> to be used topically on fungal toenail infections. A couple of questions uh, actually. It, it takes time, right? So fungal toenail infections that takes a long time to see an outcome. And so we have we have really good reports, but we haven't done any um, any study on it at all. Um, a couple more here. Let's see. Um, can biocidin be used at a maintenance dosage? It can be. Um, so typically what, what the way that I used it in my practice was, and the way that we've talked about it as a company as well, is that once you're through the therapeutic dosing, you can go down to five drops twice a day, one capsule twice a day, just to sort of maintain that antimicrobial or the, the support that that body or that that gave the body. And um, I had a lot of patients who were very reluctant to come off of the biocidin because they felt so much better off of it, and they would often stay on that dosing. Um, or, it, you know, the way that they would use it is if they're if they're staying the course with their with a healthy, you know, sort of low glycemic diet, healthy, you know, they're eating a healthy diet, low carb, relatively low carb, uh, then they can typically come off of it and they stay feeling good. And the problem happens, of course, like holiday season or uh, you know, pandemic, <laughs> it makes us all reach for the wrong foods, right? Yeah. Um, and then I found really good support for, for patients and for myself, actually, in um, in supporting that or keeping that balance. It's a little bit of a band-aid. It's not ideal, <laughs> right? Yeah. But it is, it is useful in that way as well, or can be. Yeah, um, a lot a lot of questions coming through. I think one of the big ones um, I think people wanted to um, repeat, if you could, um, either where you find that support or uh, like a number or a website you said, um, doesn't matter where you get your product from, you had uh, a support. Yes. Um, so, can... Yep, so why don't we, let's see, I, I think that Tony was going to, Tony Davis who is, is um, helping along on side this and is doing our distributor relationships. Um, I think she was going to pop it into the chat. Is that something that happened? Do you know? Oh, oh I'm yeah. here. I'm here, friends. Hi, uh, Tony. Uh, the link is in our private chat. I don't know how to post it for everyone I, if you want to grab that. Yeah, I can try. Also, um, what we can do, because I know there's like probably a few more questions that may have um, you know, been missed. There's a ton coming through. I, I love it. I love seeing the engagement. Um, and as we're at the kind of getting close to the end of time, if people email into webinars or we can kind of package these up and provide it with our follow-up uh, recording, um, you know, as a couple more resources, I can share this this um, link as well in the resources in the follow-up. So there's, there's options so that um, uh, questions can be answered and we can, you know, follow up some more. I'll just post that that link in to everyone there um, for um, to follow for some I guess some more support with any yeah, questions. clinical training is what it, what it is and what what will happen is if you let them know that I order through full script then our clinical team will give you it will offer you uh, a clinic a free clinical training and you can direct it it's basically 45 minutes and you can have uh, just a basic training or you can say I just deal with Lyme patients that's all I want to know about or I, I deal with um, oral health, whatever it is, and our clinicians are really um, can, can give you that support for getting you really comfortable using the product and what you expect. Yeah, wow, that's great. Okay, well, I've made a note of it, so we will definitely um, be sure to include that. Uh, again, I know there's so much learned. I learned a ton here, as um, I'm sure people were loving it as well by the amount of questions and thank yous that are coming in. Um, so I will um, package this all up and get it out to everyone as soon as we can. I want to um, thank you for being here with us today. Um, I, as I said, I learned a lot and, and it was a great, a great web webinar to have. Um, if yeah if anyone has any more questions um webinars at fullscript.com and fullscript.com slash webinars is where uh you will be able to find the recording of this as well um but we will be sending an email out to everyone thank you so much for having us kaylee all right thanks and everyone take care mm -hmm.